everyone good evening and welcome to this free live session on general intelligence and reasoning for the upcoming ssc cgl tier 1 exam brought to you by talent sprint so like you all must be aware in this session we'll be solving the last year's general intelligence and reasoning paper from the ssc cgl tier 1 exam while this is considered to be one of the easiest sections of this exam it is important that uh, we go through the previous papers and uh, get fully ready before we you know go ahead with the actual exam right you all know that the uh, ssc cgl tier 1 exam is scheduled for the month of may right may 8 and may 22 are the tentative dates and hopefully uh, you know ssc will stick to these dates so you have about uh, one to one and a half months left for the exam and i'm sure your preparation for the same is in high gear right so like what we have seen in quantitative aptitude and the english comprehension uh, comprehension sessions which we have conducted over the last two weeks uh, we have solved previous paper so same is uh, going to be done in this session as well we'll look at the previous year's questions but before that uh, i would like to uh, welcome you all i'm sure uh, most of you are able to see the live stream in fact all of you are able to see the live stream without any difficulty if there is any challenge i would suggest that you change the picture quality settings Uh, by clicking the settings icon available on the bottom right of the screen right before we get started uh, with the paper solving the paper i suggest all of you change the picture quality by clicking the settings icon which is available on the bottom right of the screen once you acknowledge that you are able to see the live session without uh, any difficulty the audio and the video both are clear we can start working on the questions i can see a lot of you have already joined right niti goel and bhanu lucky pallavi yadav vinu i'm sure there are many others there i can see only a few names uh, on the current chat so welcome everyone i'm sure you are preparing well for this exam right in fact i would actually like to understand how well is your preparation going before we start solving these questions right i'm sure all of you would agree with me that general intelligence and reasoning is a very easy section i mean in fact i would say the easiest of all the four sections that we have right you should be able to complete all the 50 questions in about 25 minutes right 25 or 30 minutes maximum and and this is one section where students actually score the maximum right so this this should be treated as your score booster right while there are sections where it is difficult to score uh, you know to get a high score this should help you balance it out right i i know students of talent spent of score 50 on 15 general intelligence and reasoning section of ssc exam in the in the previous years and and 40 plus 45 plus is not a deal at all right you can easily do that provided you go through the previous papers and practice some questions of uh, this type right so how is it going how is the preparation going i can see a few more names here mukesh and uh, Suvedha, Alok Kumar, Trivikram says yesterday I was not able to do coding and decoding in the RVD exam. Don't get disappointed. You must know that coding and decoding is one topic from reasoning which has got no method or no definite uh, technique to uh, arrive at the answer. Right? It's all uh, random. It depends. Right? It, it's all based on trial and error. There is no uh, definite process or approach which can help you arrive at the answer. you may or may not get it so you should not be disappointed if you are not able to solve coding and decoding questions and and it is very important to understand for the ssc exam as well because if you look at the previous years general intelligence and reasoning sections there are many questions on coding and decoding right coding and decoding number series missing numbers letter series all these topics have no method uh, to arrive at the answer right it's all it, it all depends it's like number series right number series is there a method no you may solve 500 questions in your practice but will it guarantee that you get 5 out of 5 no you may not solve any question while practicing but even then you may be able to answer all the five of questions from it all the questions asked in the exam so it it, it all depends don't worry about such topics you should actually start worrying if you are not able to solve questions from directions you should start uh, you know getting tense if you are not able to solve questions from uh, topics like blood relations right or for that matter uh, a topic like let's say uh you know coded inequalities because these are topics which have got a definite method there is an approach that can be followed to arrive at the answer right so be very clear and ha have a clear uh, idea of or, or you know have a clear knowledge on the difference between 
what are topics where there is a definite method and what are those topics where there is no definite method. Right? If you ask me what is it in quantitative aptitude, I would say number series. I mean, if you consider number series as a part of quantitative aptitude, there is no method. But every other topic has got a formula or a technique or a method to arrive at the answer. Right? So don't worry, don't panic at all. All right, so let's get started. Like you all know, we'll be taking up some questions from the last years or previous years, general intelligence and reasoning section, right? I would repeat myself that this is one of the easiest, or I would say, hands down, this is the easiest section of SSC CGL exam. And they should actually act like your trump card, right? So practice well on previous papers, practice well on the types of questions that are asked. Although most of the topics here have got no definite method, but the questions asked are very, very easy to crack, right? You can just look at it and identify what the pattern is. And, and that's it. I think keep practicing. I'm sure you'll do well in this section, right? So let's get started. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll first run through the complete paper, right? I'm sure we'll not be able to solve all the 50 questions of this section in the session today. We'll, we'll choose some of uh, the typical ones and uh, see how do we solve them. But let us quickly run through the paper and understand what are the different types of questions or what are the different types of topics that are covered in this exam, right? It will take about three, four minutes and then we'll start working on the questions. All right. So uh, look at this. The first three questions, of course, there are various sets available uh, from the last year's paper. I've chosen one of them. All the sets would largely remain the same, right? It's just that the questions would be jumbled, shuffled in different sets. Similar type of questions would be asked, right? If not the same question, similar type of questions would be asked. So the first three questions from the set that I have are as follows, right? It says from the given alternative words, select the words uh, that cannot be formed using the letters of the given word. Now, this is like a no-brainer, right? The first question, there's a word given, distribution, D-I-S-T-R-I-B-U-T-I-O-N. And then there are options, right? First option says trust, second option is situation, third option is tuition, and the fourth option is disturb. We have to find out which of these four words cannot be formed using the letters of the given word. So basically, you find out which of the three words, which of the, uh, which three words can be formed. You, you, I mean, this is like elimination, right? There's no method. If you ask me, is there a shortcut technique? No, there's no shortcut technique. Quickly eliminate the wrong answers and be left with the correct answer, right? So three such questions. I would say it will take less than one minute to answer all the three questions here. And we'll not be discussing these questions in the session today because no point in discussing something which has got nothing uh, worth highlighting, right? I mean, you all know how to answer such questions. Then question numbers four to eight are all on missing numbers. You see, select the missing number from the given responses. Now, missing numbers is like number series. A series of numbers is given to you. You'll have to find out uh, the missing one there, right? The one which comes in place of question mark. The only difference when it comes to SSC exams is like, is that uh, missing numbers here are given in a pictorial way, right? Number series is given in a pictorial way. There, there's a checkered box, right? A four by four box. So 16 cells, 15 of which are filled. And there's one question mark. So there's a pattern that is there in that. You'll have to identify the pattern and mark the answer. Is there a method to identify the pattern? No, there's no method. It's all about getting the right idea at the right time. So what do you do? You spend about 10, 15 seconds. If you're able to get the right logic, you'll get the answer. Otherwise, just skip and go to the next question. Please do not waste your time in trying to solve these type of questions, right? Especially questions based on missing numbers, because you never know how much time it is going to take for you to arrive at the answer. Sometimes even very silly questions take you know, one, one and a half, two minutes, right? Because it depends on you, whether you are getting the idea or not. Sometimes very complicated ones, you can crack in the first attempt, right? Maybe in 10 seconds. So it all depends. And wherever this situation comes, depends situation comes, I would say, don't take any chances. Give it a shot, 10, 15 seconds. If you get it well and good, otherwise skip and go to the next one. All right? So four to eight of the missing numbers will probably take uh, most of these questions in the session today. Then you know that a lot of questions from the general intelligence and reasoning section of SSC exams are asked on, uh, you know, uh, picture reasoning, or I would say figure reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, right? So there are many questions like that, right? In a, if a paper is folded as shown uh, to form a cube, then the pairs of opposite faces are. Well, we'll need to see the diagram uh, to understand these type of questions. I've chosen most of them for the session today. We'll be looking at those. And then question number 10 is on coding and decoding. In a certain language, fashion is coded as something. So how is problem coded in that language? Now coding and decoding again, there's no method. I mean, there are types of questions. You can practice on those. But, uh, but whether you'll 
get the solution in the exam or not is 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 like not known i mean it's like something uh, it's which depends so again i would say give it a try 15 20 seconds most probably you'll get it because questions asked are very simple and straightforward if at all you get stuck don't get stuck skip and move to the next one right don't get trapped in such uh, type of questions and end up wasting your precious time all right so that's about the 10th one then 11 and 12 are based on statements and conclusions right like some politicians are social workers all doctors are social workers with the conclusions so it's like syllogism you can apply your syllogism techniques to get the answer there 13th one is based on embedded figures 14th is also an embedded figures question 15th is on ratios and proportions 16th one is coding and decoding 17 to 22 are based on analogy you understand what analogy is a pair of words is given then there's another pair of words in which one of them is missing so based on the relationship between the first pair you'll have to identify the missing word in the second pair it can be a missing word or a missing number or a missing letter there are different types of analogy right word analogy letter analogy number analogy right of course we have videos on all these topics you can just go through those videos and i understand how to answer such questions all right so 17 to 22 five questions on analogy which is usually the case when it comes to ssc exams so a high weightage topic 10 percent of reasoning is on analogy right 10 percent i mean five questions out of 50 10 percent of your paper will be on analogy you usually you have seen it right then 23 is on paper folding paper cutting 24 is on you know embedded figures all right 25 to 27 these are based on venn diagrams now this is one uh, very interesting topic we'll probably solve these questions today three words are given usually I'll, I'll look at this give this example professors researchers and scientists and four venn diagrams are given which represents the relationship between these three words you'll have to identify which is the correct one you're getting it for example languages english and canada and then there are four venn diagrams so you have to find out the venn diagram which shows the relationship between the three words what are the three words languages english and canada now you know that english and canada both are languages so both English and Canada circle should come inside languages. You're getting it. So you'll have to apply those rules and find out the correct diagram there, right? Very, very important and interesting topic. I'm sure uh, it's e easy for all of us, right? The third example here is tigers, lions, and animals. So you know that tigers and lions, there is no relationship, right? There cannot be any overlapping between tigers and lions. Right? Uh, animal is either a tiger or it's a lion or something else. So clearly, tigers and lions, both the circles should come inside the larger circle, which represents animals. You're getting it? So we'll discuss all these uh, questions. Then 28 one is on uh, you know blood relations. Six members of a family A, B, C, D, E, F are traveling together. B is the son of C, but C is not the mother of B and blah blah. So blood relations again, you know, is a very uh, interesting topic, and there is a method to answer such questions. So we'll be able to do it. 29, 30 is some figure series. 31 to 35 are on odd numbers, odd numbers or odd letters or odd number pair basically classification type of questions odd man out four words are given to you or four numbers are given to you or four number pairs are given to you you'll have to find out the odd one right which we have been doing since childhood right i mean like it's like a game find out the odd one again uh, it, it depends on you know your vocabulary it depends on your general awareness uh, you know whether you'll be able to answer all these questions or not so because let's say uh, for example uh, there's a there's a question here from odd one out or classification four words have been given now let me read out these four words Berlin, bristol zurich geneva now if you don't know what these four words mean or what these four words here are you'll not be able to crack it you'll not know what the classification is you'll not be able to identify the common properties right so i mean you should know that these are all cities from you know in, in europe i mean like all these are like cities right bristol zurich geneva now what is a common property among three of these or what is the odd one like for example 35th one the words are assassinate kill murder and kidnap so you know that assassinate kill murder these are like common words probably all of us would know the meaning of these right it will be easy but if there are words which are not known to us then you'll not be able to do anything so vocabulary is very important general awareness is important if you don't know that Zurich, geneva and bristol and all these are cities what do you do with it right so it depends on your vocabulary and your general awareness to some extent, right? 
anyway assassinate kill murder and kidnap what's the answer kidnap is the odd one right because assassinate murder and kill all these three results in some something extreme right what is that the person gets killed there right it, it results in death of the person assassination means what you know somebody gets killed right some important person gets killed right usually who's who right so that's called an assassination where the person is killed i mean the person dies murder the person dies and kill of course the person dies but kidnap it, it doesn't result in death right kidnap is just to take hostage of someone for ransom or whatever the reasons be right so definitely kidnap is the odd one there then 36 to 38 are on missing numbers missing numbers or missing terms right which again so these are all very common topics if you go to any number of uh, previous papers of ssc which are very easily available in the market and online you find that letter series classification missing numbers analogy nonverbal reasoning all these have been very common commonly asked right coding and decoding so you'll have to work on these type of questions right and then 39th one is on uh, you know it says select from the alternative an op appropriate term that is identical to the term given so there's one word given to us and then there are four words you'll have to find out some one of those four words which is identical to the given word so i mean general reasoning right 40th one 40th question is based on mathematical operation this again is a very common type of question right very commonly asked question it says after interchanging plus and minus and eight and seven which one of the following becomes correct so there are some equations given to us each option has an equation right yeah i think lakshya has very rightly pointed out assassination, assassination is political killing right so that's the right way to put it right anyway uh, back to this one so question on mathematical operations four equations are given each option is nothing but an equation but it is not a right equation he says after interchanging plus and minus and eight and seven in these options which one will result in a correct equation right? which of the following becomes correct so there's nothing uh, special to be done there just follow the instructions given in the question and find out which is the correct one 41 is on directions Kailash walks three kilometers to east, turns south, walks four kilometers, and so on. Easy to do. 42 is on sequential series. We have also have a video on sequential series, right? Number series, letter series, letter pattern series, right? Sequential series. So this again is easy to do. 43 is on mirror images. 44, 45 are on arranging the following words as per dictionary, which again is no brainer, right? Four words are given, or actually five words are given consume consciousness you know conservation consequence and others there we'll have to arrange them in the dictionary order so i can't help you with it right you know what dictionary order is just quickly arrange them then there's one more on the same thing right convince converge converse and converse arrange them in dictionary order 46 is again on directions raju drives 25 kilometers north and so on 47th one is the popular matrix question, right? If you all have attempted the SSC exam earlier, or if you have solved any of the previous papers, you would know that one question from this section is always on matrix. There are two matrices given to us and using which you'll have to find out the code for a given word. The given word here is DEAK, D-E-A-K. So you'll probably look at this question as well, very, very easy to solve. And, and it's like a gunshot question, right? Unless they seriously change the pattern this time, you can say this question would come, right? So it is pretty, you know, uh, what do we say? Obvious that these type of questions would be asked. At least so far it has been the case. Usually I say that please do not depend on previous papers. But if you look at the pattern of SSC exams, it has been the case, right? But remember, solve previous papers. It's a very important part of your preparation strategy. But do not depend on that. I would again say that, right? You never know. They may change the pattern. The most Predictable thing about bank exams or government exams is unpredictability, right? They may change it. You have to be well prepared, right? And quickly, 48th one is again on mathematical operations, interchanging of signs and all that. 49th is coding and decoding. And 50th one is a kind of, uh, I would say, I mean, reasoning question. It's like a puzzle, but you can easily solve it uh, by framing equations, right? It says there are deer and peacocks in a zoo by counting the heads. They are 80 and the number of legs are 200. How many peacocks are there? So there's a count of 
heads given to us, counts of count of legs given to us, and we'll have to find out the number of peacocks. So easily can be cracked using the equations, writing the right equations. Right. So that's about the paper. So if I have to, uh, you know, summarize this paper of general intelligence reasoning, I would say topics like coding and decoding, missing numbers, and analogy, classification, which is odd one out, right? Number series, letter series, mirror and water images, paper folding and paper cutting, and uh, you know, embedded figures, figure completion, directions, blood relations, alphabet, many questions on alphabet, like arrange just per dictionary order, or arrange, uh, you know, which of the following words can be formed using the given word or cannot be formed using the given word, letters of the given word. Then questions of Venn diagrams, matrix question. These are all the types of questions. So quite a predictable paper, right? I can say so safely. And if you practice well on these type of questions, you should easily score 45 plus, right? There may be one, two questions which you may not be able to crack in that limited 15, 20 seconds of time, right? But most of it are most of these questions are very, very easy to do. All right. So remember, this should actually be treated as your score booster. You may not be able to. I'm not trying to demotivate or uh, you know discourage you guys. You may not be able to. We may not. I would say we may not be able to score 50 on 15 quantitative aptitude, or maybe 45 plus in quantitative aptitude. But definitely, we can do that in this one. So try to balance it out, and it doesn't take much time. Like I said, 20 to 30 minutes. Minimum 20 minutes you'll have to spend. Maximum 30 minutes. All right. So keep that in mind and practice accordingly. Let's now move on to uh, solving some of these questions, right? Uh, what I'll do now is share my screen, which has got a number of questions uh, there. And I'll give you about 30 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds per question. Wait for your responses and then give you the solution, right? So here we go, sharing my screens, the first question. Select the missing number from the given responses. So like I said, I have not chosen those very uh, simple uh, no bringer type questions like 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 arranging the words in alphabetical order or dictionary order or finding out what words can be formed or cannot be formed using the letters of a given word we'll, we'll go ahead with questions where you'll have to do some analysis the first one here select the missing number from the given responses so there is a uh, you know a, a kind of table given to you three columns and four rows and look at the numbers 116, 343, 8, 125, 5. By the time you read these first two rows, you must start feeling confident about it, right? You should know what the pattern there is, right? I mean, at least by looking at these numbers, they're they like familiar, right? They're like familiar. If you have practiced well on numbers, you would know what is special about these numbers. So, 1, 2, 6, and it, it also depends on the order in which you're reading them, right? If you read row wise, it may look complex. But if you read column wise, very, very easy. To do. One, let, let's read column wise. One, eight, 27, then 35, which looks to be odd. But then uh, turn to your right after 27, 27, 64, 125, 216, then 343. So we are following this. This is the pattern. We are able to follow. We are going like this. So find out the missing one. I'm sure most of you have cracked it. But anyway, I'm going to change the question a little bit. First, me, first of all, let me see your responses. Yeah. Shalu, Sonia, Supreet, Malik Kumar, everybody has got option two. 729. We have Lata Vaishnavi who has just joined. Good evening, uh, Lata. You are you're too late for the session, but don't worry, you have not missed anything so far other than the paper pattern there. Vaishnavi has also got 729, right? So that's the answer. 729. Option 2 is the answer. I'm sure uh, it's like very easy. So like I said, no method. If you ask me how do you know it is 729, it all depends, right? You should be able to find the pattern, right? 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared. So this has to be 9 squared. 9 squared is 729. Easy. Option 2 is the answer. But my question to you is, how about the fourth row? What is the pattern here. Why are we getting 35, 401, and 1575? So I would say, I mean, whoever has the set, whoever has set the paper, with all due respect, he could have actually made the question a little complex by, you know, skipping something in the fourth row rather than the third row. See, third row is quite easy to predict, right? 
what is happening here what calculation helps us arrive at 35 401 and 1575 or let's say something is missing out of these three then what would you do you're getting it the question could have got complex by having something missing in the fourth row so i want you to help me with the fourth row calculation it's cube i'm sorry it is cube nine cube yeah thanks for pointing that out so one cube two cube three cube yeah i think i was reading it as square all along no it is cube so one cube two cube three cube four cube five cube six cube seven cube eight cube and nine cube right so what is happening in the fourth row he says additional of the uh, addition of the column i think srinivas has got addition of the column but is it so look at the first column there 1 plus 8 is 9 9 plus 27 should be 36 but what we have here is 35 so it's not really the addition of the column then what is it what is the calculation anyone who has got the calculation there add the first three rows when Katesh also says the same add the first three rows is it so let's add the first three rows let's let's do it for the second column we have already done it for the first one let's do it for the second column 216 plus 125 how much will that be 341 341 plus 64 is 405 but what is given here is 401 so that's not really the addition Yeah, I think some of you have got it. Uh, Bhavya Mohan and Swagato Banerjee. And yeah, I think two of them have given the right. So what, what exactly is happening here is this. See, 35 is this calculation, right? We can say 1 plus 8 plus 27 minus 1 squared is equal to 35. 216 plus 125 plus 64 minus 2 squared is 401. Remember, we had got 405. From that, if you subtract 4, which is actually 2 squared, in the form of 2 squared, we get 401. Then for the last column, 343 plus 512, missing number we know is 729. From this, if you subtract 3 squared, you will get 1575. You're getting it? So, so like I said, if, if you ask me, how do you know this is the solution? There's no, there's no method. It, it, it all depends. You should be able to get that idea, right? That we are subtracting, you know, addition of these three minus one square. Addition of these three minus two square. Addition of these three minus three square. All right. So that's the pattern there. Moving to the next one. Look at the next one. Select the missing number again. All the first five questions are on missing numbers, right? So 2, 3, 8, 4, 5, 10, 6, 7, 12. Or I would say 2, 4, 6, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. And there's something given as a total there. 32, 50 and question marks. So what is happening there? Anyone? Quick. 200, yes. I think... Swagato Benerji and Katisaran, Rajeshwari, all of them have got 200. But what's the pattern? See, answer is, of course, needed. But I would appreciate if you give me the solution as well. What made you arrive at 200? Ankit Gupta, Sukhpreet Kaur, all of you got 200? Yes. Yes. Lakshya Negi has also got 200, right? So what are we doing here? It goes like this. See, there are there are multiple ways of looking at it. If you, if you see, it is like this. 2 into 4 plus 4 into 6 is equal to 32, right? 2 fours 8, 6 fours 24, 8 and 24 is 32. Similarly, for the second column, 3 fives 15 plus 5 sevens 35. 15 plus 35 is 50. So for the last column, it has to be 8 into 10 plus 10 into 12. So 80 plus 120, 200 would be the answer, which is option 3. 
This is another way to look at it, right? I mean, if you, if you take four common, what do we get? Uh, two plus, uh, I mean, let's let's take four common. What do we get? Uh, two plus six into four. You're getting it. Which results in thirty-two. Similarly, in the next column, three plus seven into four. In, into 5 into 5 right we'll take 5 common from the second column and in, in the third column we can take 10 common so basically we are adding the first element with the third element and multiplying that with the second element right multiply with the second element that's a pattern so we'll say 8 plus 12 into 10 which is the same i mean if you take 10 common here and 5 here and 4 common here we get the same result there so 8 plus 12 20 20 tens is 200 that's a response get the answer next one Find out the missing number. Select the missing number from the given responses. 4, 5, 7, 2, 3, 3, 3, 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 8, 9, 7, 12, 32, 24, 70, question mark. So the first thing that you'll have to look at is, should we read it row-wise or should we read it column-wise? Now, this, this clearly shows that there's some calculation being done at the row level because if you see, 4, 5, 7, 2 are all single digit numbers. 3, 3, 3, 9 are all single digit numbers. But then you look at row wise, 4, 3, 2, 8, and suddenly we get 32. 5, 3, 1, 9, and then we have 24. 7, 3, 3, 7, then we have 70. So clearly, the calculation is on, on this left hand side part, which results in something on the rightmost cell there. Remember, I, I, although I'm giving you some 15, 20 seconds or maybe a little more 30 seconds to crack these questions. When you're trying it out in the exam, you do not have more than 20 seconds. Either you get the answer in 20 seconds or you skip it, right? So I would actually appreciate if if you if you tell me that you have skipped it. You get it? Don't just keep quiet if you're not able to get the answer. Say that I'll skip it. While you may think skipping is easy, it's not so. In the exam, we get trapped in such questions. We feel like trying it out, right? It's like a gamble. It's like putting your money when you are gambling, right? You keep putting your money thinking that you'll earn this time. And you'll keep investing your time thinking that you'll get the answer this time. You're getting that analogy. So, so just comment that you'll skip it. If at all, you're not able to crack it. All right. So what, what are we doing it? I'm sure some of you have got the response, uh, got the answer there, right? Shraddha, Patro, Jay, they sing 84. Akshay has skipped it. Good. I, I like it. I mean, uh, you should be clear that you'll be skipping it. No problems in skipping the question. There's nothing wrong. Vaishnavi says, I'll skip. Vikram says, I'll, no, sir, we'll do last. So maybe he's trying to say that he'll come back. See, coming back is okay, but for the moment, you'll have to skip it. If you're not able to crack it, just skip it. So what are we doing? The calculation goes like this. 4 into 3 into 2 plus 8 is 32. 4, 3 is 12. 12, 2 is 24. 24 plus 8, 32. Then 5 into 3 into 1 plus 9 is 24. Right? 5, 3 is 15. 15 into 1, 15 plus 9, 24. Same goes with the right? 7, 3 is 21. 21, 3 is 63. 63 plus 7, 70. So what, do, what will be the question mark here? Question mark value will be 2 into 9 into 4 plus 12. So 2, 9 is 18, 18, 4, 72, 72 plus 12 is 84. Now if you ask me, why is that the examiner has given this pattern? It is his wish. Right? It depends on what he wants to give. You can have infinite such questions. Right? That's the point. Quickly, the next one. So this is like as good as a number series question. I mean, you just have to identify the pattern. There. Select the missing number from the given responses. So here we have a circle which has been divided into five parts a smaller inner circle and then the remaining area is divided into four parts so numbers are like 11 12 9 6 in the middle we have 78 so most probably the result 78 has to do something with the operations on the remaining four numbers you're getting it we have to understand how do we get 78 using these four numbers now you can try out multiple things. Like for example, let's add all the four numbers. Do we get 72, 78? No. Just by observing the numbers, you know that adding will not result in 78. Because, you know, even if uh, all the numbers are less than 15, 15 fours is 60. So even if you add up, you get 
60 at best. I mean, so addition is not the point. Multiplication, no. Multiplication will result in too much. 11 into 12 is 132. Then 132 into 9 into 6 will be a very big number. So what is it? What is it? 11 plus 6, 16. 11 plus 6, 17. 12 plus 9, 21. 17 into 21 also will be way big, right? Then 23 into 15 also will be big. What, what can be done then? Look at this. Multiply these two numbers. Multiply these two numbers and take the difference. So 11 into 12 is 132. 6 into 9 is 54. The difference of these two numbers will result in 78, right? 132 minus 54 is 78. So same has to be done here. 14 into 10, 140. 7 into 8, 56. 140 minus 56. How much will that be? 84. Option Sorry, option one would be the answer. Are you getting it? 84, yes. I think Saket Kumar had got a wrong answer. He said 54, 54, which is not there in the options at all. But Vaishnavi and uh, Somitra Roy, Saket has got the right answer now, right? And Sonia, Vikram, all of it got 84. Good. So that is all about these kind of questions. I mean, no method, like I said, but easy to crack. The last one, last one on this pattern, and then we'll change it. Select the missing number from the given responses. Now, this is like different, right? A circle has been divided into five pies. One, two, three, four, five sectors, right? Five, 122, 10, 50, and question mark. So what is it? I would give you about. OK, before I could give you some time, we have got the responses, right? Kates, Katiresan, Swagato, Monika. Why, why 26 is the question? Well, 26 is one of the options. And all of you have got 26, so which means you are all in you know, sync and it's like should be the right response, the right answer. But why 26 is the question? Why are we taking it as pi square plus 1? Why is it 5 squared plus 1? Prime number? OK, 5 is a prime number. But why 5? Malik Kumar has skipped it. Good. Good. So it looks like Malik Kumar and Venkatesh are able to follow the uh, point there, right? Skip it. You should, you should actually build this habit of skipping questions, right? It's very important. See, understand. If you want to solve, or if you want to go through the all the 50 questions in a particular section, you'll have to skip some questions. It's like a, a cricket match, right? If a batsman wants to stay on the ground for all the 50 overs, he'll have to skip certain balls. He cannot hit every ball there, you know. Swagato Energy says it's a very easy question. Yes, it is an easy question because you've got it. But ask others. They'll say, no, we are skipping it. You're not getting the idea. So it depends from person to person. Some of you may get it. Some others may not get it. Well, it goes like this. I'm sure all those who have answered 26 have got the pattern there. But the explanation goes like this. Look at this number 5. 5 is 2 squared plus 1. Look at 10. 3 squared plus 1. Look at 50. 50 is like 7 squared plus 1. Look at 122. 122 is 11 squared plus 1, right? So what should be this number? So clearly plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. That is common. Two square. Now look at the remaining part of it, right? Two square, three square, some something else here. Yeah, something else plus one. You know, some square plus one. Then seven square and eleven square. What is the pattern here? These are all prime numbers. If you see two, three, seven, eleven, all prime numbers. So what is the prime number between three and seven? It is five. So 2 squared plus 1, 3 squared plus 1, 5 squared plus 1, 7 squared plus 1, and 11 squared plus 1. 5 squared, 25 plus 1, 26 would be the result. Now, after knowing the solution, you may find it very, very easy. I can see Suveda says, no idea. I, I know many others have skipped it. right? So all those who have skipped it, after looking at the solution, you may feel like, oh, this was very simple. Why didn't I get this idea? Which is OK. No problem. Don't panic. Don't, don't feel disappointed or don't get upset that 
I'm not able to solve such questions. You never know. In the exam, you may get all five of them. I mean, it's like practice. You have to definitely practice a uh, question like this. But then there's no guarantee that you'll be able to crack it in the exam. Right? It, it is all about getting the right idea, right time, right idea, right time. Sometimes what happens, the moment you step out of the examination hall, you'll get an idea. Oh, this was the method. This was the pattern. But how, how do you get it at the right time is a question, right? Question we says, yes, logic is easy. Yes, of course, it was easy if you get it. Otherwise, it is difficult. It's always the case, right? So I guess it, enough of uh, such questions and missing numbers. Let's now move on to something else. Look at this. Paper uh, question based on paper folding. It says if a paper is folded as shown in the figure to form a cube, then the pairs of opposite faces are. You have 30 seconds for this, which is actually too much, right? I would say you can solve you can solve three such questions, at least three such questions in 30 seconds, or maybe more. More than three questions in 30 seconds. Is it A, B, C, or D? There are four options, A, B, C, D. What is the correct answer? I've got the first one here from Kati Zerelson. This is C. Vikram, Lakshya, all have got C. Swagato Energy says skip because no idea. See, earlier Swagato for the previous question, he was saying it was very easy. But this time he has skipped it. Supreet says no idea. I'll skip it. But all others have got C. Most of the others have got C. So see, it depends. Swagato was able to crack those missing numbers questions where others were not able to do. But when it comes to this one, he has raised his hands. He says, no, I can't do it. I have no idea. And I think uh, there was one other person who had said, I know I have no idea. So it all depends. But I would say, uh, although I appreciate your smartness for the previous question, Swagato, I thought this is actually a very simple one. You cannot skip such questions. Please don't skip this model please do not skip this question type now why am i saying so because there is a definite method to answer such questions are you able to follow that's what i'm trying to tell you right Swagato, although you were very good in answering those previous ones if you skip this one then then it's like what your, your ability of cracking those questions is not helping you score more, right? This is something which can be cracked in less than five seconds, I would say. Less than five seconds. I repeat, it doesn't take more than five seconds to find the answer. So you'll have to identify such topics. All of you, not just him, but all the others also have to identify, uh, uh, you know, such topics, right? You should be very clear with what are the topics where it's good to skip if you're not able to get it and what are the topics where you should never skip. This is one topic where you should never skip. Swagato says, please tell the smart method. I don't know the method. Well, definitely I'll tell you the method, but please do not skip such questions. Now I can see somebody saying we can use erasers. We can use eraser to solve these type of questions. Let me see who it is. I cannot see your name there. Uh, Suveda. Suveda says, yes, we can use eraser to solve these type of questions, which is good, a good idea. But I would say time consuming. Very simple to solve this one, right? You need not use any eraser. You don't have to use eraser. You can crack this in what? Less than five seconds. Do you think that can be done by using an eraser? No. Very simple. Remember, whatever be the model, see, this is a very popular question type, right? And it can be given in different formats. There are four uh, boxes here. And the other two may be anywhere. Like, for example, you see the other two here. So it can be in the in this way. I'll use different colors to show different formats, right? The other two extensions may be like this, right? Or it can be in the third this one or maybe in the fourth one right the other extensions may be here or, or there's one more pattern here right it is like this the other two may be on different cells right one is here second one is here or maybe you know one is here and this is here you're able to follow i'm using colors to show those pairs right so one can be here one can. remember always these extensions that we have will be opposite just keep that as a blind rule as a thumb rule right follow it blindly the extension that we have on the left and the right will always be opposite. They'll always be opposite. Take it for granted, always the extensions, whether they are together or on different faces or different uh, boxes, they'll always be opposite. 
So use that as the first rule to identify the answer. You getting it? Use that as the first. Now, what are the extensions here? Plus and division. So I know that these two should be opposite. This is an opposite pair. Check here. Plus and division are they opposite? No. You getting it? He's saying plus and circle are opposite. So wrong. Plus and triangle are opposite. Wrong. Plus and division are opposite. So maybe correct. Don't mark correct immediately. Maybe correct. You have to check the other pages. Look at option D. Here also plus and division are opposite. So both of them satisfy the first condition. So you'll have to go for the second condition. Are you able to follow? The first condition is satisfied by option three, option C, and option D. One and two are anyway ruled out. A and B are anyway ruled out. If you are lucky, maybe three options are ruled out. So no need to do any other step. In the first step itself, you have got the answer. Now that two options are left out, we'll check for some other condition. What's the other condition? Remember, in this strip of four boxes, this rectangular strip that we have, the alternate faces will always be opposite. Alternate faces will be opposite. So triangle will be opposite with this trapezium and rectangle will be, sorry, triangle will be opposite with, I'll, I'll clear all this uh, rubbish here. We know that first and second are ruled out. Remember, alternate faces are opposite. Triangle and circle will be opposite. Rectangle and trapezium will be opposite. So look at this triangle and circle are opposite. Yes. And definitely trapezium and rectangle will be opposite. So it satisfies all three conditions. I can see this. Right? If you look at option D, triangle is given with trapezium. Impossible. Triangle and trapezium cannot be opposite. Or circle and rectangle, like you can see here, cannot be opposite. So option C is the correct answer. I would request your acknowledgement. Are you all able to follow? Jayesh Singhal had very clearly explained this. Alternate are opposite. Yes. Remember, for this rectangular strip, alternate boxes are opposite. Alternate boxes are opposite. So first one and third one will be opposite. Second and fourth would be opposite. Right? First and third, second and fourth. And extensions are opposite. Extensions are opposite. That's it. So this is one topic where there is a definite method and very, very easy. Do you think it will take any time more than five seconds? No, it won't take more than five seconds. Done. So Preet says, is it always follow this condition? That's what I've been explaining to Preet. Yes, always. Remember, extensions are opposite and alternate phases are opposite. That's it. Blindly follow that and you'll be able to get the answer. Done? Clear to all of I'll just repeat, I think somebody wanted me to explain this once again. Remember guys, extensions on the two sides are always opposite. So you should know that plus and division will be opposite. Here plus and division are not opposite. Here also plus and division are not opposite. But option C says yes, plus and division are opposite. Option D also says plus and division are opposite. So both of these follow the first condition. What's the second condition that we'll check? In this rectangular strip, the alternate faces will be opposite. So first and third will be opposite and this will be a pair and second and fourth will be opposite and this will be a pair. So first and third is what triangle and circle here you see yes triangle and circle here triangle and circle are not opposite. So D is wrong hence C is correct. Right. So it is a no brainer. You should never skip these questions. Look at this one from coding and decoding. Again coding and decoding has got no definite uh, way of arriving at the answer. It is all trial and error. And you have to just spend some 10, 15 seconds on this, right? If you get it, nothing like it. Well and good. Otherwise, S, K, I, and P. What are we doing here? Look at the solution. Fashion. And if you look at this, F, O, I. H S A N. So if you really observe, both the words have got the same letters. Fashion and this jumbled word, the coded word has got the same letters, right? All are the same letters, but in, in certain order. So try to understand the pattern there. See, F remains F in the first position, N remains in the last position, H also remains in the last position. The only difference is these are done like this. H, A, I, and O. Follow that. You're getting it. So if I write problem, what happens? P remains P, M remains M, and the middle letter B remains B. L, which is on uh, right of B, will become left of B. 
E will come here. O which is left of B will become right of B. R will come here. So the answer should be P E L B O R M. P E L B O R M, which is option one. There's one more way to do it. If you don't want to do all this drama in the exam, just give numbering to the letters. F A S H I O N. And this is F O I H S A N. Number these letters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now find out the number sequence. One is one, F is the first letter, O is the sixth letter, I is the fifth letter, H is the fourth letter, S is the third letter, A is the second letter, N is the seventh letter. That's it. So the pattern is one, six, five, four, three, two, seven. Apply the same pattern to the word problem. Now P R O B L E M. What is the number in here? P is one, R is two, same, right? Three, four, five, six, seven. But what do we want? One. What is one here? P. Then six letter. Six letter is E. Fifth letter, right? What is the fifth letter? Fifth letter here is L. Fourth letter. Fourth letter is B. Third letter is O. Second letter is R. And seventh letter is M. So P E L B U R M. Option one is the answer. Right? Next one. Well, this is one question on ratios. Which have been asked in the last year's, which was asked in the last year's general intelligence section, right? Try and crack this one. Anne, Bill, and Ken shared some stamps in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 4. After a game, the ratio became 5 is to 2 is to 2. If Anne won 21 stamps, how many did Ken lose? Sorry. How many did Ken lose? This would probably be the last question of the session today. I wish I could solve more number of questions, but we have very limited time. So Agato wants me to solve question number 12. I have to see what 12th one is. Well, we do not have question number 12 on the screen. Uh, so that uh, I mean for me to share it with you, but since Swagato has asked me to solve 12th one, I will explain it to him right directly. I, I can read the question here. Or maybe after we solve this one, I will show the 12th question to you, right? To all of you. Answer for this one, right? What is it? 14. I think Vibha, Chaurasia, Suveda, Sonia, Vinu, and there are some others whose responses have got uh, buried in the chat there. I'm not able to see their names. But everybody has got 14. Rajeshwari says, I'm not able to solve reasoning questions in 30 minutes any suggestion yes i have three suggestions for you suggestion number one practice suggestion number two practice suggestion number three practice a little more there's no other shortcut the only shortcut to score more in this exam is to practice all right back to this one 14 is what everybody says let's verify 14 is the answer yes 14 is the correct answer how do we do this see understand he says the ratio between a b and k is some ratio, right? I mean, something has been divided. Some stamps have been divided. What is the ratio? 2 is to 3 is to 4. After the game, the ratio became 5 is to 2 is to 2. So the new ratio, A dash is to B dash is to K dash is 5 to 2. 5 is to 2 is to 2. So basically what happened here, they're like playing a game where they lose or earn stamps. You're getting it? Initially, some stamps were divided in this ratio. After a game of exchanges, uh, the ratio comes out to be 5 to 2. Now he says, uh, this person and has won 21 stamps. How many did can lose? So clearly, if you observe, and earlier had two parts. Now he has got five parts. So obviously he has earned something, right? Whereas Ben had got three parts initially, left with two parts now. So lost something. And same goes with Ken, right? Ken had got four parts earlier. Now he has got only two parts. So clearly, uh, Anne has won and Ben and Ken have lost. Now he says Anne has won 21 stamps. How many did Ken lose? How do we crack this? See, if you observe, what do we generally say? We say, you know, it is like 2x, 3x and 4x. Where x is like each part, right? We say that total number of stamps have been divided into how many parts? 2 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 9 parts. Out of 9 parts, 2 parts belong to Anne, 3 parts belong to Ben and 4 parts belong to Ken. Bill and Ken. So 2x, 3x and 4x represents the number of parts with each of them. The point is they the total number of stamps remain the same before and after the game. Total number of stamps remain the same. Even after the game, 5 plus 2 plus 2. Total number of parts is how much? 
nine parts, right? Earlier also it was nine parts. Two plus three plus four and uh, five plus two plus two. So here I can say it is five x, two x, and two x. Remember, if the number of parts change, if the total number of parts change, then I cannot use x again. I use y. I will say five y, two y, and let's say for example, if it is given as five is to two is to one, then I cannot say five x, two x, and x. It will be wrong. I'll have to say five y, two y, and y. Because the total number of parts have changed here. Earlier there were nine parts. Now there are only eight parts. Five plus two seven plus one eight parts. So you cannot use the same value of each part, right? X here means what? X represents each part. X is equal to the value of each part. See, I am talking about this part because in our videos of relation proportion, we have solved all the questions using this concept of dividing to number of parts, which is the best way to solve it. So now, what do you do? Because the number of parts are equal, it's very easy to solve. He says. And has one twenty-one stamps, so I can say twenty-one is nothing but five x minus two x. How many stamps did and one? Three x stamps, which is equal to twenty-one. So what's the value of x? X is equal to seven. So each part here is seven stamps. How many did Ken lose? Ken has lost how many? Four was left to two, which means he has lost lost two parts, right? Four x becomes two x. He has lost two parts. If each part is seven, two parts, two parts will be how much? Two into seven, fourteen. That's your answer. So you don't have to write any of these steps on paper. Don't put steps on paper here. You can do this calculation mentally. Like for example, let me let me clear all this. Let's say if you have to find out how many did uh, Bill lose instead of Ken. Let us find out how many did Bill lose. What do you do? You know the total number of parts are equal. Anne has one twenty-one. So two x and five x. The difference is three x. X is equal to seven. That you have calculated. How many did Bill lose? Three becomes two. He has lost one part. One part is equal to seven. You're able to follow. How many did uh, Ken lose? If it is Ken, Ken has lost two parts. So two parts will be fourteen. That's how you just do it, right? So getting the answer is not important. How quickly do you get is important. Right? What what method do you follow? How much time do you take to arrive at the answer is important. Because eventually, I'm sure all of us will be able to crack it. No doubt. It's like a running race, right? All of us will reach the finishing line, but that doesn't make you the winner. Who reaches the finishing line first is what matters. Yes or no? So treat your exam like a running race. It is actually a running race if you ask me, right? Like 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 that. Viru Shastra Bhutte. You remember three idiots. He says life is a race. Life is like a race. I would say these exams are like a race, right? You have to beat others to reach uh, the finishing line. Uh, in the first or second or third position, you're getting it. So you have to be very quick, very quick. You just cannot come and say, "I have also got the right answer." What matters is, have you got it quick enough? Have you got it fast enough? Right. So that's about this. I think we'll stop here. We are already, uh, you know, beyond the schedule. We are like uh, three minutes late, running late by three minutes, or or maybe I'll take just one question, one more question before we close it. Right. Solve this one. In a certain code, garnish is written as R G A I N H S. How will genius be written? I think this is uh, similar to what we have already solved, right? The letters remain the same, garnish and G A R N I H S. So what has happened here is they've been jumbled in a certain uh, order. So apply the same logic, and we'll be able to do it. Yes or no? Apply the same logic, and you'll be able to crack it. I'm sure this is a easy one, having done the previous question on coding and decoding. So I'm not going to work on this question for you. You all can do it yourself. Moving on to the next one. I I think this is something interesting that we should look at. Right? This would be the last set of questions that we'll work on today. Right? Identify the diagram that best represents the relationship among uh, the classes given below. Well, there's a huge gap between given and below here. Let's avoid. Uh, I mean, neglect that. The words are professors, researchers, and scientists. We have to represent them using a Venn diagram. Tell me which is the correct diagram: A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, or D? Which diagram appropriately depicts the relationship between these three words: professors, teachers, and researchers and scientists? Answer is three. Yes, I think all of you have got it. No, but there are some. Differences. G1 Varma says it is B. 
Mugi says, I don't know, which is a good answer, right? You should skip it. But others all have got C. Suveda says it is C. Swagato has got C. Shubro has also got three. Answer is three, he says. Three or C. Yeah. I'm just waiting to see if there's any other response. Anything other than C? No. So good. I am glad that all of you have been able to do this easily. Right? What 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 is it? See, the idea is this: you have to understand what can be what of these three can be common, what of these three can be can overlap, right? Which two of these can overlap? Like, for example, can there be an overlapping between professors and researchers? You look at this: professors, researchers, and scientists. Can there be overlapping between professors and researchers? Yes. Some professors can be researchers or some researchers can be professors. So this overlapping is possible. Can there be an overlapping between researchers and scientists? Yes. Scientists can be researchers or researchers are scientists. You're getting it. It is possible that these two circles overlap, right? Ultimately, they're going to represent each entity with a circle. So which, which of these circles can overlap is what we are trying to look at. Now, can there be an overlapping between professors and scientists? Yes, of course. Some scientists are professors. Some professors can be scientists. So which means you take any two of these, they will overlap. They will overlap. And the best diagram is C. Yes or no? It's a, this is professor, this is a researcher, and this is scientist. So there can be overlapping between professors and researchers. There can be overlapping between professors and scientists. And there can be overlapping between researchers and scientists. So that is the clue here. That is how you have to look at it. If they cannot overlap, if they do not overlap, then we will try to keep it uh, separate, right? So option C is the answer. Quickly, the next one. Next of this type. Languages, uh, English and Kannada. What's the answer? Pagato, please do not get impatient. I know you have asked me to solve question number 12, which I'll take towards the end, right? What's the answer? Answer for this one? Three again. Yes. Akshay, Tati Zirasan, G1, Vikram, Sakit Kumar, Swagato, Ravi Tej. All of you have got C. J has also got C. Yes. How do we do it? See, understand. We know that, I mean, it's like languages is a general word, right? English is a language. English is a language. English will completely come inside language, right? English is one of the languages. Similarly, Kannada is one of the languages. So Kannada will completely come inside languages. You're, you're able to follow. So languages is a superset in which English is one language, Kannada is the other language. Can there be overlapping between English and Kannada? No, it cannot. English and Kannada cannot. These are like two different languages, right? Completely different, right? They're disjoint sets. English and Kannada cannot overlap, right? You cannot say this is English and this is Kannada. Nonsense, right? If he's talking about English speaking people and Kannada speaking people, yes, this overlapping is possible. But here he's not talking about English speaking people and Kannada speaking people. He's talking about English and Kannada as a language. So can there be an overlapping? No, this is wrong. They have to be treated as disjoint sets. There cannot be any overlapping. And both of these come under languages. So the appropriate figure here is C. And I think it should be easy to crack the last one here. Tigers, lions and animals. Tigers, lions, and animals, right? Quite similar to what we have done in the previous question, right? Ti animals are like language. You know, tiger is one animal. Lions is also one of those animals. I mean, one animal. An animal is a category. Like English is a category. In, uh, sorry, language is a category. English and Canada are types of languages. Animal is a category. Tigers and lions are different types of animals. So which is the bigger C? Yes or no? Again, see. So I think all three questions from this uh, set had C as the answer. Well, we cannot take it as a shortcut. Please do not follow such logics. Right? Answer is C for these type of questions. Right? Don't do that. I'm sure you're smart enough. Right? You'll not be doing anything like that. So that brings us to the end of this session. Uh, I think uh, I wish I could solve more, but we have very limited time and we've already crossed the time limit given to us. But before we uh, wind up, I'll quickly take up a question which Swagato wanted me to answer. Right? I don't have it on the screens to share it with you, but I'll read it out. This is question number 12, which is on uh, statements and conclusions. See, this this is 
how the question goes. It says, the statement says, the crop condition continues to be critical even after the rains. I can probably put it on the board here, right? It says, the statement says, right? The crop condition continues to be critical. Even after you have to you have to focus on all the words here, right? I would say the word even is important here, right? That's a key word. And then there's a set of conclusions given to us, right? Conclusion number one says the crop condition was not critical before the rains. Conclusion number one. The crop condition was not critical before the rains i'm sure it should not be a difficult one i'm wondering why swagata is confused with this right and the second conclusion says the crop condition was expected to improve was expected to improve after rains and i've already uh, pointed the keyword there, right? Even after the rains. Only two follows. I think Lakshya, Negi, and Akshay Chakko have answered this. They say only two follow, only conclusion two follows, which is the answer. See, what, what read the statement literally. The crop condition continues to be critical. Continues to be critical. You understand? This is also an important word. It continues to be critical even after rains. It is, it, it continues. That means even before the rains, it was critical. This, this word continues important, right? It continues to be critical. So earlier also it was critical, even before the rains. So the crop condition was uh, the crop condition was not critical before the rains is ruled out. Can you say it was not critical? No. The word continues shows that it was critical even before. Look at the second conclusion. The crop condition was expected to improve after rains. Yes, it was expected to improve. But even after the rains, it has not improved. They are saying it continues to be critical even after rains, which means they were expecting it to improve, but it has not improved. It has not improved. That's a different story, but they were expecting it to improve. So, only conclusion to follow. I don't know what the uh, problem is with this one. I mean, it's like, like an easy, right? Easy one. One follows. Dirat says one follows. Why, why do you think one follows? One does not follow at all. Clearly, one does not follow. These are like negative, right? It is, it is like. A negative statement. I mean, if you get continues and then say not critical before, these are opposite. Yeah. Answer is conclusion to follow. So I hope Swagato, you got it. And and others were saying only one follows or something else. Please check. I, I'll I'll tell you the options. I'll I'll read out the answer options. Option one says conclusion to follow. Only conclusion to follow. Option two says both one and two follow. Option three here is neither one nor two follow. And option four is only one follow. So combination is not considered here, right? Combination will not be considered. We will not be looking at both the conclusions together. We know that one does not follow clearly, and we know that two follows. I am actually more interested in what the confusion was. I thought this is easy, easy, right? Anyways, uh, the the takeaway from this session should be that general intelligence and reasoning is actually a score booster, right? And you should ensure that you boost your score in the SSCGL Tire 1 exam with the help of this section, right? I don't say that uh, they'll follow a similar pattern. They may make it complex. That's a different story. But going by what has happened over the past few years, we are expecting this to be, I mean, we can, we can expect that this would be easy, right? If you look at section like general awareness of this exam, right? Like what? You don't know. Whatever amount of reading you do, whatever amount of content that you go through, whether you'll be able to answer the questions or not is, is not in our country. I mean, like general awareness, what is the syllabus? Everything under the sun comes under general. They can go above the sun also. Then maybe say everything under the sun, but I would say they can ask anything inside the sun or above the sun also. There's one question from biology. There's one from physics. There's one from chemistry. There are questions from History, geography, polity, economics, books and authors, current affairs, awards, sports, whatnot. 
everything. And knowing that there will be a question from history does not mean that we'll be able to prepare on that and go. History, history is what? History is a is a vast subject. Right? What will you read? They can ask you a question from Stone Age, or they can ask you a question from history which is as recent as 1990s or maybe 1940s or 19th century or 18th century, right? So I don't say you you, should, you don't prepare for it. Of course, we have got uh, very exhaustive and comprehensive learning content for general awareness as well, right? There are 200 plus PDF books uh, as a part of the Talent Spins SSC program. We can explore that, right? All the programs are available on our website, www.talentspin.com/pan, or you can call our toll-free number, which is 1-800-2009-16. I'll put these on the board here if you uh, wish to explore our program. So just go through it and see. I'm sure all those who have only enrolled for it are uh, you know, preparing in high gear with the help of the program there. And we are we are taking continuous steps to you know enhance your learning experience and uh, you know boost your chances of selection. So you can visit this website or call us on 1 800 2000 916. And, and there's actually a, uh, a, a good news, right? All those who are trying to explore the program, there is a special offer going on, right? The year end offer. And the prices will go up from April 1, right? So it's the right time to join, right? Not just for the sake of price, right? That price you pay is actually an investment, I would say. You're not buying something, you're investing in your future, right? So it will definitely pay you back. But more importantly, if you are aspiring to crack the SSC CGL exam, if you want to get into the government job uh, to the SSC CGL exam, you have to start your preparation right away if you haven't done it yet, right? So start your preparation right away, join the best and beat the rest. I mean, that's what I would say. All the very best for your exam, right? Exam is just one and a half months away. So keep practicing. The only shortcut is to practice more, right? We'll all meet in the next session, which is scheduled on the coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. And uh, I don't exactly remember what the topic is, but it is something on English language, right? I, I guess active, passive voice or direct indirect speech. So please join us with your friends and, uh, you know, get ready for this upcoming SSC CGL exam. All the best. Good night. Take care and keep practicing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talent Sprint. Trust your preparation for the upcoming SSC CGL Taiwan exam is in high gear. Like you all must be aware, algebra carries a high weightage in the quantitative aptitude section of this exam. While this topic is considered to be a nightmare by most of the students. Hi guys, welcome to Talent Sprint. Does the thought of getting a parajumbled question in the exam jumble you up? Well, if the answer is yes, then do not forget to watch the free live session that's brought to you exclusively by Talent Sprint in which I'm going to discuss a few tips and techniques for you to crack the question